Welcome to another virtual CBI. Today we're going to be shopping at Bond's grocery store to make pepperoni pizza bagels. There's going to be a few items that we're going to pick up at the grocery store. But before we get started, there's something that we always start these lessons with, and that's deciding what we're going to need before entering the grocery store. I'm going to pause the video so that we can have a discussion and talk about things that I'll need before I enter. All right, so these are the things that I'm going to need. Good job if you guessed them. I'm going to need a mask money, shopping list, and a bag. So good job if you got those. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my reusable shopping bag into the grocery cart and enter the door here. So I got to make sure that I've got my mask on, I got all my other items in my pocket, and I'm ready to get shopping. So I'm looking around seeing if I can decide where to go first. Before we get started with that, let's take a look at our shopping list. There's a few things on our shopping list that we're going to be purchasing. We're going to be buying plain bagels, pizza sauce, pepperoni slices, and mozzarella cheese. Now one of the things I want to do differently this activity is I want you to write a shopping list with me. So here, I'm going to have you guys write this shopping list with me. So if you can get out a notepad or a piece of paper, I want you to follow along and copy down the items that we're going to be shopping for. So the first one here is plain bagels. So I'm writing that here on my notepad, you can see. And I'm trying to write neatly so you guys can see, but we may need to pause the video here if you need a little extra time to write these things down. So I've written down plain bagels. The second thing we're looking for is pizza sauce. So I'm gonna write that down as number two. And the third thing we're going to be looking for today is pepperoni slices. I'm also going to write that down. Part of the reason I'm having you write down the items that we're going to be buying today is so that we can keep track of when we pick up an item and we add it to the shopping cart. So you can do that by crossing out an item or putting in check mark next to it. And this is going to help us stay organized. Lastly here, I'm going to write mozzarella cheese. I also have you guys write this list so that we can continue to work on our handwriting skills. As a lot of times when we're at home during distance learning, we're relying on typing and we're not really working on our handwriting as much as we should. So it's a good skill to keep practicing, making sure that we're working on our writing. All right, so this might be a good time to pause the video so that we can make sure we have all this written down. Okay, with that written down, we're gonna start walking down the aisles, being sure to pay attention to the signs up above that are numbered. You can see them at the very top of the screen, and so I'm keeping an eye out for familiar words that are going to help me locate the items on my list. So I'm making my way down towards this floral section of the grocery store, but I'm also being very cautious around people. There's currently still the pandemic, so I need to be very careful with maintaining social distance. I'm walking, and as I'm going, I'm slowly looking at the words on top of those signs, and I'm going to pause here for a second because I see something that might help me. So I've stopped and I'm looking up at aisle marker number 16 and I'm looking at the words on that sign. And there's a few words here that are gonna help me find one of the items. So two of those words are pasta sauce. So I don't have pasta sauce on my list, but I do have another sauce that may also be located in this aisle. And that item is pizza sauce. So it's very similar, it's a tomato-based sauce and pasta sauce is also tomato-based so I think maybe this might be where you need to head. So I think I'm gonna take a turn here and see if I can find pizza sauce located next to the pasta sauce. Okay, so I'm gonna turn here, take a left, and immediately I see different types of pasta sauces and potentially pizza sauce. So I'm gonna take a close look here and see if I can find what I'm looking for, and I think I might see it. So as I'm stopped here, do you think the pizza sauce I'm looking for is here at number one? Or is it over here at number two? Or is pizza sauce here at number three? So again, I'm looking for pizza sauce. I'm gonna pause the video here so that you can make your selection between one, two, or three.
All right, good job if you selected number one as the pizza sauce. That's right, that's exactly the item that I'm looking for. And I'm gonna go ahead and select that and add it to my cart. So I'm taking it off the shelf and putting it in my cart and I'm gonna start heading down this aisle. I'm also gonna cross that item off of my list or check it off my list as I go. So I'm headed down the aisle and I'm headed towards what looks to be the butcher section. So I'm heading down here looking for another item that might be on my list. And as I'm going, I'm looking around and I see meats. You know what's also a type of meat are the pepperoni slices I'm looking for. So that's what I'm gonna be looking for in this selection. I'm gonna pause here because I think I might see the pepperoni slices. What do you guys think? Are these the pepperoni slices I'm looking for? So take a close look. See if you can tell me if this is the pepperoni slices that I'm looking for. Does the packaging look the same that I have down here as it is up here in the red circle? I'm gonna pause the video so that we can discuss. All right, those were not the pepperoni slices I was looking for, so good job if you got that right. Those were actually salami slices, not pepperoni, but very similar packaging and very similar meat product. All right, so I'm stopping here. I see pepperoni, so I know I'm in the right area. But I also saw pepperoni when I was coming by the second rack close there, and it looked like they had a few more options over here. So I'm gonna stop here and maybe take a closer look. There's definitely a few different meat products here. So I just need to be careful in reading the words for which one I need. Can you match the package of the pepperoni from what I have in ingredient number three here? What do you think? Is pepperoni here at number one? Or is it here at number two? Or is it here at number three? Go ahead and take a closer look for the one that says pepperoni. I'm gonna pause the video here so that you can make a selection of the correct choice. Good job if you selected number three. That's right, that's pepperoni, and that's one of the items on our list. So we're gonna go ahead and get that off the rack and add it to our cart. So here I'm putting it right next to our pizza sauce and I'm gonna start moving my cart. And as I'm doing so, I'm also gonna check off that I have pepperoni slices from my shopping list. So I have two of four items and I'm gonna start heading down the aisles. Again, looking at the markers, but I see one word that's very helpful for me right now is I see the word bakery. And one of the items on our list is a baked good. Uh, I don't know if you remember which one that is, but it's our plain bagels. So that might be in the bakery section. It is a baked item, so I'm feeling pretty confident that this, this is the direction that we need to go. So as I'm walking down here, there's quite a bit of people moving in around here. Uh, they were doing inventory, so I see a lot of different workers here. So I just need to be extra cautious to stay out of their way and navigate my cart around. There are different things they've got set up here. So I'm slowly making my way into the bakery section and as I'm approaching, I can start to see different bread and bread products. Looks like there's things like muffins and cookies here. And so I'm looking for though, are these plain bagels. So I think I see them right here. I wanna pause here for a second and see if I can locate the plain bagels. Might be a little bit difficult at first to see those, but what do you think? Are they here at number one? Are they over here at number two? Or are they here? at number three. I'm gonna pause the video here so that you can make your selection of which ones are the plain bagels. Good job if you selected number two. That's right, those are the plain bagels. But as I go in to take a closer look, I see there's actually a few different types of plain bagels. There's ones from Thomas and there's ones from a signature brand. So what do you think? Looking at the prices here, they have different prices on them. Same amount of bagels, very similar products. Which one do you think I should buy? Number one or number two? I'm gonna pause the video here so we can discuss which one is the most affordable option to buy. If you selected number one, that's correct. 
This one has a lower price, so this is gonna be a more affordable option for us to buy of these two products that are almost identical. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this off of the rack. And as I do so, there's one thing that I wanna make sure that I'm checking, and that's the best before date or the expiration date. So I'm gonna check the tab on the bread to make sure that it's gonna last for at least a little while so that I have time to make my pizzas. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my cart and mark it off my list. There's only one more thing I'm looking for and that's the mozzarella cheese. So I'm gonna start making my way towards the front of the store and I'm gonna start looking at the aisle markers again. And I'm gonna stop here at aisle marker number two because I see a familiar word which is gonna help me find my last thing. It says cheese. So this is the right direction. And as I approach this refrigeration section, I can already see some cheeses, but when I look up, I see again the word cheese, so I know I'm in the right section. So this will be a good place to stop and see if I can find the mozzarella cheese that I'm gonna look for. So I'm gonna stop right here, and it looks like there's a few different types of shredded cheese. Is the mozzarella cheese I'm looking for here at number one, or is it over here at number two, or is it here at number three? I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video so you can make your selection and tell me which one is the mozzarella cheese. If you pick number one, that's right. That's the mozzarella cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that off the rack, check the expiration date briefly, and add it to my cart. It looks like I've got four items in there and I'm gonna check that off of my list. That's my last item. I've got everything that was on my list. So I'm starting to make my way towards the cash register. And as I do so, there's some different protocols at the store and there's a special line that I have to join, making sure that I'm not crowding the register too much. So I'm gonna get in position and get ready to check out. So the first thing I need to do before checking out in the grocery store is to wait in line. All right, so it looks like she's ready for me. So I have to put my items on the conveyor and she's gonna start checking me out. So my items are starting to run down the conveyor and she's gonna slowly start scanning them. And as you can see, as she's scanning in them, they're gonna start popping up on the screen here and you're gonna to start to see price. So it's giving me a balance of how much money I owe. But at this grocery store, they also have club prices, which are discounted prices for these same grocery items, which are gonna reduce my price just a little bit. So here I'm gonna enter my club card for this store. And you're not gonna be able to see that in the video but it's gonna bring my total down, saving me a couple dollars. So I've entered that in and you're gonna see a price change at the end here. So she's putting this items in my bag, she's getting it ready for me, and now it's time for me to pay. So my total is $10.68. I'm gonna pause the video here so we can determine what's the dollar over amount for us to pay this total. Good job if you said $11 as a dollar over amount for paying our total. I also want to spend a few minutes here and look at the different bill combinations that we can use for paying our bill. So I'm going to pause the video here so that we can discuss these different combinations of bills that will help us pay our $11. So today I only brought $1 bills, so we're going to be using that to pay our total. So I'm going to be using these dollars to count out. So here I go. one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm still missing one dollar. And here's my eleventh dollar. I'm gonna put them into a pile, hand them over to the cashier, and she's gonna use her register to give me my change and my receipt. So she's counting them just to verify I gave her the right amount, and she's putting them in her register here. And then as she does that, my chain's gonna come out of this slot at the end of the counter. I'm gonna pick that up, and she's also going to hand me my receipt. So I've completed all the steps for checking out at the grocery store, as you can see in our list here. The last thing I want to do is I want to make sure I hold on to my change and my receipt. So I'm going to put that into my pocket so I can keep it for later in case I needed to give it to my teacher or my parent. So here I am on my way out to the parking lot. Okay, so I'm back at home. Now it's time to unload my grocery bag. So I'm gonna take the things out of my grocery bag that I just bought at the grocery store. I'm gonna lay them on the counter here so that you can help me decide what items are gonna go into the refrigerator. So I'm pulling out here my cheese, my pizza sauce, I've got my bagels, and then finally my last item, which are my pepperoni slices here. So I might pause the video here so that you can tell me 
what of these things will go into the refrigerator? If you said the mozzarella cheese, that's correct. We found them in the refrigeration section, so that will go in the refrigerator. The rest of the items can stay out for now, but that might change as we open them. We'll discuss later. All right, setting up. This is going to be our final steps before we make our pizza bagels. So we're going to need a baking sheet. We're also going to need a spoon. We're also going to be making sure that we have a plate. We are going to need parchment paper. This is optional. It's going to help a little bit with the cleanup. And then finally, we might need a knife. So these are five things that we will need, but there's also a few other things that might be helpful for us. So we're definitely going to need to use an oven. And when we use the oven, we're going to need our oven mitts. We may also need a cutting board, and we may need a cheese grater, depending if we bought whole cheese. But in this case, we bought shredded cheese. Time to cook. First thing we gotta do is wash our hands. Once we're done with that, we're gonna preheat our oven to 375 degrees. Let's take a closer look at the ingredients that we'll be using again. These are things that we bought, but now we only need one sliced bagel. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab that out of the bag. And as I'm doing that, these bagels are already sliced, so I don't have to cut it. I'm just going to tear it apart. Your bagels may not be sliced, and if that's the case, you're going to have to use your knife to cut it in half. So I've got my bagel here laid out on my plate, and the next step is to pull out my pizza sauce, which is one of my other ingredients. I'm going to open the lid here, and I'm going to go ahead and grab my spoon, and I'm going to start putting that pizza sauce on the bagel half. So I'm just going to take a big scoop, and put it on one half of the bagel and make sure that I spread it out evenly. I'm going to take another big scoop, make sure that I put it on the other half of the bagel and spread that out evenly. I want to make sure that I get it all on top into the sides. I'm covering the whole bagel with pizza sauce. Not just the center, but all the way to the edges. So I'm going to be doing that. And I'm going to put my spoon away for later and my pizza sauce. I won't be needing that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my mozzarella cheese. I'm going to open my bag here of shredded cheese. If you didn't have shredded cheese, this is where you may need to shred your cheese. But I'm going to open up this bag and I'm going to grab some of that shredded cheese out of the bag. I'm just going to grab a small handful and I'm going to start sprinkling it on top of the bagel, right where I put that pizza sauce. So I'm going to sprinkle it all over one side of the bagel and then the other side of the bagel. Being sure to cover the whole thing with shredded cheese. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to reseal my bag, making sure that I get all the air out of there so it stays fresh for longer. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add sliced pepperoni. And to open this, I just need to pinch and pull, and it's going to open the bag for me. And it has a little zip seal on it and as I pull that open I'm going to get in there and grab a few pepperonis. I don't want to grab a lot, only enough to cover my pizza. So I've grabbed a few slices. I'm going to start separating those slices and putting them on top of the cheese that I just put down. And as you can see that I'm peeling apart the slices of pepperoni and adding them on top of my bagels with the pizza sauce and the cheese. And it looks like I have almost the perfect amount of pepperoni, so I don't need to grab more. All right, so that is it. Looks like I've got everything I need assembled. But before I keep cooking, I need to make sure that I put some of my ingredients in away. And as I mentioned, some of the things need to refrigerate after they've been opened. One of those things are my pepperoni slices. On the package, it says refrigerate after opening, so that needs to go in the refrigerator, as well as my pizza sauce. It also reads on there, refrigerate after opening. So I need to put them in the refrigerator so that they don't spoil. All right, now I'll get ready for my next step and that's getting my baking sheet and my parchment paper, which are optional, ready. So I'm just gonna tear off a piece of this parchment paper and that's just gonna keep the stuff from sticking to the pan. So I'm gonna put my bagel pizza on the baking sheet and the parchment paper. 
getting it ready to put into the oven. So my oven should be preheated at this point and it should be ready for me to add. So I'm just gonna put those onto the baking sheet and parchment paper and I'm gonna move over to the oven. So using my oven mitts, I'm gonna open up the oven and here you can see I'm grabbing my oven mitts. I'm gonna hold on to the baking sheet securely. I'm gonna put that baking sheet in there, sliding it carefully so I don't burn myself. I'm gonna close my oven. And the next thing I need to do is move over here and I wanna set the timer. I need to bake it for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. And as you can see here, I'm entering 10 minutes and I'm heading start and that's gonna start the timer. I actually ended up cooking it for 12 minutes, but once that was done, the timer goes off and I know that it has finished baking. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my oven mitts again. I'm gonna pull out the oven rack and I'm gonna grab the baking sheet carefully with my oven mitts and I'm gonna put it on top of the stove for now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push that oven rack back in and close the door. And I'm gonna put my oven mitts down and I'm gonna be sure to turn off my oven here and I'm gonna let that pizza cool. So once it's cool, I'm gonna put the pizza on a plate and I'm gonna cut it. And I actually, when I'm cutting it here, it's still pretty hot. Uh, I didn't let it cool quite long enough, so it's kind of hard for me to cut. And my knife was also very sharp. So you can see me cutting here. I'm kind of struggling a little bit, a little bit there. But once it's cut, it's ready to eat and enjoy. And if you haven't already, be sure to turn off your oven.